Let my tree bear good fruit so I can be used by you. You are hearing this song used by you from my dear friends, Tori and Shauna. You can find their latest album, Share Your Love Volume 2, wherever you stream your favorite songs. I'm so thankful for their friendship and that I get to share their music on Unscripted. I'm recording once again from my studios here in Hilliard, Ohio, powered by the Spot Athletics. I can't wait for you to meet today's guest. Thank you for listening. Make sure to like, share on all your platforms. For now, let's get into today's episode. All right, everybody, welcome back to Unscripted from my studios in Hilliard, Ohio, powered by the Spot Athletics. I have a very special guest today. I love doing this where I'm in a much more comfortable seat this time because the last time I was I was speaking to my guest, I was on his podcast, and I'm that's the most uncomfortable seat I'm ever in. So, Ken, why don't you introduce yourself, and we will go from there. You know, Aaron, you, you say all the time that you don't like coming on other people's podcasts, <laughs> but you were really great. I mean, like, I, you, you didn't skip a beat. It was great to have you on. My name is Ken Burke. I am the host of the Competing for Christ podcast. I live in Indianapolis with my wife, Lulu, and work for the National Federation of High Schools. Just graduated from college last May. And yeah, we're loving life. Now you're a Jacksonville fan. So we, we've moved up our recording tonight because it's the draft. And so yeah. are you from Jacksonville originally or no? Yes. Yes, I am born and raised, or I was born in Atlanta and moved two weeks later. My parents said okay, to Jacksonville. So grew up there then. Yep. Grew up there till I was 18. What brought you to Indianapolis? So went to college in Co- Covenant College, a lookout mountain, Georgia, and then got a job. The job brought me to Indianapolis and just been been here for almost a year now, which is crazy. Do you like Indianapolis? I do. It is it is such a good town. It's it not too big. It's not like a, you know, New York, Boston, but it's not too small either. And it's really easy to get around too. So it's really good. It's funny because Indianapolis and Columbus are like carbon copies of one another. They're they're yeah. both flat. They're both very similar. They both have the outer ring of the freeway yeah. around it. Yeah. It's kind of like a clock. And so it's uh, in terms of the, the freeway system, I had so many opportunities to possibly relocate to Indianapolis. And every time I was just like, no, no, no. But if I could, if I, it, I was okay doing it. It's a, it's a great city. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, this was, this land is so flat. It is. It is it's it really so is. weird. Like I, you know, I, I've said I went to college in Georgia and my college was on a mountain. So if we had to go to the grocery store, we had to go down the mountain like every single time. And coming from that to Indianapolis, where you could see for probably 10 miles on a flat, flat road. I'm like, Dude, what is this? I, I had no <laughs> idea. My wife was so confused. It was, but we like it. We like the flat <laughs> flatness. Are you a runner? Yes. I, I, that's funny you ask. I'm training for a half marathon, actually. Are you doing the Indy 500 one? No. I wish I was though. We're just, we're just doing a small one though, but I, I wish we were though. So back about a hundred pounds ago, I was doing half marathons and we had to sign up super early cause it sells out. Yeah. Yeah. It, they don't, I don't know if they'd allow past like 5,000 people, 4,000. I don't know. Maybe it might be more than that, but it's, yeah, I know it's a lot of people. Do they still go out to the track? Do you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The start, start. Downtown. downtown I think. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. And then, and then they go all the way to the track. And the um, track is like two miles around, right? Yeah. Cause I think it was like, <laughs> so that's what somebody told me. They said, Hey man, it was a, it was an Indianapolis uh, resident. He said, Hey man, when you get there, like don't leave it all on the track. Cause you gotta, you gotta <laughs> yeah, go back. You know, <laughs> it, it's, it's deceptive too. Like I actually, we do this thing called the corporate challenge each year for yeah. my, for my job. And it's at, the Indy 500 track and we did, I think I did the 5k there and it's like deceptive because mm-hmm. obviously it's, 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 yeah, it's just, it's so weird, but it, it was fun and it's a really cool experience too, to go to be in there. It is. And, the, but the pitch of the, the track, you don't realize that there's, there was a, oh, that's so what steep. I remember about it. It was seriously yeah. steep. So you almost had to stay to the infield, but it was a great experience. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we had a great time. Just, just the, like, you're like, man, I'm running on a racetrack. 
<laughs> it was yeah. really cool. Yeah. So it, if you get a chance, do it. It kind of smells. It kind of it just smells. It's not in bad a great neighborhood. The, like, that, oh no, no, it's, it's not. not. <laughs> we lived before we moved. We lived like ten miles away, or not even like five miles away, and it was not good. No. Not a good part. It's not. So you, you want to get out of there as quick as possible, which is why you don't want to <laughs> leave everything on the track. So that is not why we got on. But if you do get a chance, do it. It's it's a really awesome experience. It's fun. And believe it or not, I did that. And it was a lot of fun. And I'm glad I got to do it because I got to check the bucket list. So where where's your half marathon going to be? Actually, it's in Chesterton, Indiana. A couple, I think it's an hour or so away. So it's going to be a small one, but... Hopefully, you know, we can make it. That's awesome. Have you ever done one before? No, first one. You'll um, love it. I I never did one because I was an athlete and, you know, always training. I didn't want to, I've ran like a, up to a 10K before. Oh, you'll be um, sure. But and it, I think after college, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. We're, me and my wife are going to train and we're going to do it. And we've been good so far. Let's see if it, see if it pays off. I have to check because my daughter is, so she's at Grace College. In uh, okay. Warsaw, and she's doing one, and I, it's in Indiana. And so I, oh. I have to check. My daughter might be at that race. <laughs> I have to see when that There's is. There's a and, lot of them. When is it? May 14th. Okay. Is that Mother's Day? So it's, it is. Yes. So yeah. sh- shout out to your Wear a special shirt for your wife. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> speak, to. Speaking of family, that's not why we got on to talk about running and <laughs> My better days, <laughs> somewhere Bruce Springsteen is playing glory days. But <laughs> anyway, man, thanks for coming on. I wanted everybody to inter- I wanted to introduce you, and I wanted everybody to, to get to know you and meet you because, uh, man, I just appreciated being on your show so much. And the more I've listened to your podcast, the more I absolutely love it. I love what you're doing. I love how you do it. You do it way better than I do. There's a lot of show prep. You send great emails. The guests are really ready. Unlike tonight, where we talk about races and things. So let's just start at the beginning. Let's just tell your story, and then let's get into your faith story after that. Yeah, so obviously we talked about grew up in Jacksonville. I think growing up, I was the oldest of four children, and they were all sisters. I have all sisters, oh all younger sisters. So, it, you know, you know how, how that experience is. But I do. <laughs> growing up, I... Not to bleed into the faith story, but it's a big, big part of my life. Obviously, sure. um, I, I didn't, I didn't have my pro- priorities straight growing up. Uh, it was always like, you know, sports are number one, and then relationships and friends, and it was never about my faith growing up. And I think my athletic experience, obviously, like I said, played in, played baseball at Covenant College, and it, it, it just consumed me. Everything that I did, I was thinking about sports yeah. and I just, I could never stop thinking about it. Even, you know, today I, I consider, I don't consider myself an athlete anymore, but sports like, you know, keeping up with the draft, like we were just talking about, keeping up with every sport that I love, every team that I love, it can, can it can consume me at a lot of times. But like I said, growing up, I had I had priorities that, you know, I didn't didn't align with my Christian faith. It was kind of like, you know, I go to church on Sunday and, mm-hmm. you know, the rest of the week I kind of lived the way the world says to live. But never found satisfaction. I never found satisfaction until one day, you know, I I was broken. I just I had committed so many sins, so many pe- so many people said to me like, you know, you are not who you are. You you are not the person that God made you to be. Mm. And I think that opened my eyes and I just kind of like, I surrendered at that moment. I, I kind of just said, all right, well, you know, I, I don't know what the future has, but God, you know, you, you got me. And I, I still struggle with this thing is like anxiety and depression and, you know, so many of my generation does. Mm-hmm. But I think every single day I strive to just give it all to God. And it's definitely, definitely hard, but, you know, doing a podcast you know how it is. You know, you want to get so many downloads, you want to get so many listens. Right. But, you know, I think for me doing it, it's just about sharing the gospel with athletes. And like I I mentioned, I host the Competing for Christ podcast. And that was the reason I started that was because I wanted to give 
I wanted to make sure no other athlete made the same mistakes that I did yeah. where, you know, sports controlled my emotions. They controlled how my day went. Like I, I would train for hours and hours and just not think of it, be, think of it, think any differently because that's just who I was. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, there's, there's so much I can go into, but yeah, shows yours, man. No, <laughs> it is. It's your show. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's, it's just been, it's been wild the past four or five years since that moment. Jesus has just been so, so gracious and so amazing in my life and nothing, nothing that I've done. I could say it's, it's from me. It's all from Jesus because I am a broken, sinful person. And I, I just, I can't even imagine where I'd be if, you know, he didn't step in and say, Hey, you surrender to me because without me, this life is pointless. So this is recent. You said four or five years. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It was right before I went to college. There was kind of one specific night that I was just like, you know what? I I can't do it anymore. I I just broke down Mm -hmm. and people around me were like, "What? what is with you? Like, why are you acting so... I don't know, counter Christian, I should say, Mm -hmm. Uh, whether that was, you know, sins that I had committed, stuff that I've done. And I was just so, I was so lost. And and there were so many different priorities in my life that weren't aligning with my Christian faith. And I think that moment shifted my life. It shifted because I, if you would have told me five years ago that I'd be doing a podcast Mm -hmm. about Christian athletics, Mm -hmm. I would have said, you are insane, dude, because I was, I still am the least qualified person to ever do that no no <laughs> that's the fact that you're talking to God. so anyway no I, I i agree with you so let me ask you this you mentioned anxiety and depression that runs through this office and podcast as well people regular listeners know that something i've dealt with my entire life mm. including my family growing up things like that so if my timeline is right and this is hard to believe but if if my timeline is right you said four or five years ago, the pandemic hit three years ago. It's hard to believe, but like we're talking about COVID three years ago. That's insane. The shutdown and everything. So I know that that was hard for everybody, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. Um, Let alone those of us who have anxiety, who have fears about the future, especially husbands of, and dads, you know, it's like, what's, what's going to happen here? How am I going to provide all those things? So you, you were really, is that, is my timeline lining up right? Like you're, you're just kind of really, really hitting a peak, I guess. I, I don't know. I, I can't speak for it. I'm, I'm just like that timeline. Is that right? And how did you, did you lean on your faith at that time? Or did you, did you strengthen it or did you find that you were questioning it? I think, yeah, you're absolutely right. During quarantine and during lockdown, that was when the peak of my anxiety was ramped up. Like I'm sure so many people, people's were, I I think it was, it was a struggle both ways because I had, you know, my anxiety was like, oh, this, you know, COVID-19 is killing people. It is going around the world. doesn't care. doesn't care who it is. It's going to, it's going to kill people. Right. The election year, you know, we had all the riots and stuff like that. And It just consumed me. And I, I was so invested in social media and stuff like that that I, I just kind of, I kind of, I kind of let it consume me. And, and to a point where, you know, I would have anxiety attacks at night and I would, you know, be on my, be on the phone with my girlfriend, wife at the time. Mm-hmm. And I would just be like, I don't know what's happening. Like I can feel, I can if physically feel my chest just like wrenching. Like it's, it does not, feel normal but then i went i actually went to my first counseling session Mm -hmm. and that was a game changer 100 percent. and i i was so i was so i don't know if it was blind or just like against counseling when i was growing up because i was just like you know counseling is for what it's like (laughs) you don't you don't go to counseling if you're a man you know what i mean yeah and when i went i was like this is this is for everybody. Like everybody should be going to counseling because, you know, maybe you don't struggle with anxiety. Maybe you don't struggle with depression. It, it just helps you in your thoughts and 
you know, we have minds that we know maybe 10% of what goes on in our minds. And going to counseling showed me like, it's okay to not have answers. It's okay to have that anxiety, but how are you going to, first of all, let God intercede and, you know, use that anxiety to, you know, help you Mm -hmm. help shift it and make it to like point it to Jesus. And, you know, second of all, how are you going to fight against it? And how are you going to turn the tide and show others that it's okay to have those struggles? It's okay to talk about them. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And going to counseling showed me that right off the bat like at first first session i was like wow i'm i'm in i'm right. 100% in I, I i loved every single part of it it's funny because it's almost like we have this backpack for anybody that hasn't or if anybody's listening to this and you think that we're crazy or you've thought about it or you're afraid to go <clears throat> you know i had to go i didn't have to go well i kind of had to go i always thought i had it together like i knew my issues i know my issues right um mm-hmm. and i i always thought i could fix them myself and it's almost like you got this backpack full of just random stuff, you know, and you're carrying it and you think, man, I'm carrying it. I got it. I, I got this. I got this. And then you go and you open that backpack up and you dump everything out on the floor. And for me, what I found with, with my counselor was he systematically took those things and put mm-hmm. them in perspective in the right places. And all of a sudden, everything I was carrying made sense. At least a little bit more. I don't know if I, 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 for me, I don't know if I'll ever be fixed. I know that when things happen now, I'm better equipped to know, okay, that's happening because of this, that uh, that urge is because of that for me. And then, uh, I I don't know. I just, I found it incredibly helpful. And to your point, I I hope people that hear this aren't, you know, we live in a world, you, you know, you're, you're doing a sports podcast. Thank you, Kevin Love, and other mm-hmm. athletes who have said, "Me first. I'm going to give you the yeah. gift to go in second. I, I, you know, I, I deal with this. And now, people that we look up to, for sports fans, our heroes, are willing to say, "I'm not okay, and that's okay, right?" Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And yeah, the counseling showed me like deep things that I, I really didn't think about, like. For example, my my me and my dad had an interesting relationship relationship growing up. It was definitely centered around sports and centered around like you know success and stuff like that. And it's sh- like I, I always questioned like why is he you know a certain way towards me and how why is he reacting like this and I I questioned if he was a good father or not, and then. You know, I went to counseling and then the counselor was like, so what was your dad's background? What, Mm. you know, what did he grow up in? And then I was like, wow. Like, I mean, his father, like he, he borderline abused his, his children verbally, physically. I mean, my dad has told me horror stories of his dad and, you know, my dad, even though he wasn't perfect, he, in his mind, he didn't act like his father. So he thought he was being a good parent and don't get me wrong. He was a great dad, but those things that came up, it was just a snippet of what his dad, you know, did to him. It it, it just, it, to him, it didn't seem like it was that much, but to me, you know, it was like, why are you being like this to your son? Yeah. And you know, there's, there's so many examples of the good things that come out of counseling that you don't even know before you go. Again, it just, yeah, all those things. And I think, you know, I know there's history in my family as well of a lot of things and a lot of baggage. And I know my mom did her best, you know, mm-hmm. but I think, especially now as a parent, I think we do our best, but, but some of that stuff's creeped in, you know? Yeah. And uh, I've told, I don't know how many people I've, I've told my son multiple times. I don't know how many times I sat at the edge of his bed and said, man, I got that one wrong. He's our first and I have Mm. two daughters and I had to go up there and say, man, I got that one wrong. Cause I, what I'm doing, you know, I'm, I know I don't want to do it like a lot of what I, you know, dealt with, but at the same time, 
I, I want, there's so much that was so good to your point of, man, I had great parents, you know, but I think we all try to fix what we thought was broken. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, that's a, probably a whole nother podcast for another day, but man, that's good stuff. It's deep. So when did you start the podcast? And the, the biggest thing I want everybody to hear, we're kind of maybe even at the halfway point before anybody, you know, hopefully they haven't checked that out <laughs> because oh, I want, I want you to be introduced to this podcast because I love what you're doing. And I think you're doing a, a great job. You're doing amazing things. And you've had some incredible guests. Your most recent one was unbelievable. A great story. So how do people find your podcast? Just start telling us about the podcast. Like let everybody know, how did you start it? So very interesting story of how it started. I, you know, I started it two years ago. I was still in college. It was the spring semester of my junior year. Um, I don't know why this feeling in, in my gut started, but I was so, I loved podcasts. I loved, loved listening to podcasts. But I couldn't find one that was specifically for Christian athletes. And, you know, I didn't, there were, there were some, don't get me wrong, but now obviously sports spectrum is a huge one and it's such right. a great resource, <laughs> such a great resource. But I had it in my gut and I don't know why, like, Hey dude, you need to start one. And I had no experience. I had, <laughs> I literally ordered an Amazon bundle kit from, uh, from Amazon, obviously. Uh, of, and I just started, I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I had three or four guests lined up. Other than that, I was kind of lost. I didn't have any topics that I wanted to talk about, but 60 episodes in, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know where this is going. I, I haven't known for the past two years and I not trying to, because God has, God has brought it this far. I know however far it's going to go, he's going to bring it there. And yeah, you can, you can find it com- competing for Christ podcast.com. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, wherever. But yeah, it, it's been, thank you for all of your compliments. It, it's just been, it's been, it's one of the hardest things that I've ever done in my life. It is one of the hardest things, but oh my gosh, has it, it's, it's brought in, it's brought in people that I never would have known if right. if I didn't do it. And you know, you're in a prime example. I would not be on this podcast if I didn't, you know, have you on or if I didn't start a podcast. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's just it's so wild how Jesus just he works and every time that I, I I was talking to my mom the other day like every time that I think that I'm finished or almost done mm-hmm. with this, something else happens and I'm and Jesus puts six more people in my line of my path and i'm like just have them on the podcast why yeah. why wouldn't you have them on the podcast and every single time it's such a great conversation and i i don't know where it comes from but i i mean obviously the only answer i have is jesus yeah well you're it's you're you're using your platform for him and i think that that means something mm. and i think i don't know i i don't know about the podcast media department in heaven, but I feel like he honors when we're honoring him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know that he's shining a light on any one of us in terms of, you know, that one's better than the other one. But I do know that the podcast, we've talked about this, is podcasters. Podcasting is a very lonely, it's very lonely. And people are like, what are you talking about? It, you, know, you put it out there in the world and you just don't know, you know, stats are, are hard to come by. You get some and it, that gives you a little bit of a feel, but you just never know where all this stuff kind of ends up. And so I guess I like to, when I know what I have to do and I see somebody else that's doing it and doing it better and doing it well, I like to let them know. And so, and I, I genuinely mean that I really do. So let me ask you this, who were, for people listening, they're like, wow, okay. Podcasting is a nightmare. It's not a nightmare. <laughs> you, it's a back to what you said. I, I do want to focus on that. What are some of your favorite stories from your, you said 60 episodes. So first 60 episodes, mm. what were some of your favorite stories? What were some of your moments where you're just like, wow, that, that, <laughs> um, man, there's a few that really stick out in my mind. I, I you listened to the one the other day, Brandon, so Buffer. I mean, mm-hmm. he, one, one of his stories that he told, it was just so crazy. I mean, to get, to give everybody a little, a backstory, he, 
was an MLB player and was in, you know, playing minor league baseball at the time, got arrested, spent three and a half years in prison. And then he told the story of this one person named Bone. His nickname, his nickname was Bone. And Brandon was going to get some medical treatment at the at another branch or section of the prison. And he gets put in with this guy named Bone that had three life sentences. And Brandon didn't do, I mean, he was he was only in there for three and a half years, so he didn't do as much of a crime, I guess you could say, as this man did. And he, I mean, he said that he was so scared. He was scared for his life in the moment. And by the end, by 10 days in, he thought, he thought they, they had forgot about him. Like he, he was just sitting there with this man. And Brandon said like, man, by the end of it, like he was asking me about the Bible. I was praying with him. I was sharing the gospel with him. And Brandon was like, man, if I never had gone to prison, like that wouldn't have happened. That man would have never, probably never heard the gospel. Right. And he said he didn't know what happened to, to that man, but it, it just goes to show you like God will put you in positions no matter if you, if you want it or not. And I think that the other one that really sticks out in my mind is somebody that's a really great friend to me that I've the only reason I knew him was because of the podcast. His name's Favish. He's from Kenya. And I had him on really early on, actually. And he was, he's a fellow podcaster. And he like he said, like, man, I, I think I asked him, like, what is what are you scared of in this life? Mm -hmm. And I I think his answer, like, as an American, it shocked me because he said, Man, growing up, I was so scared of going to bed hungry. Mm. And I was like, my right. God, I have never once in my life had to fear that. And he said, I mean, there's so many people in that country that are, that go to bed hungry and they go to bed not knowing when their next meal is going to be. Mm. And I mean, that got me to my core. Like I, I, that really just sticks out to me so much now. And I, I still talk to Fabish to this day. Like I, I was just on his podcast again. And every time I see him, man, it's just like, he's the happiest man in the world. He's the happiest person in the world. And he's, he's such a great guy. And, you know, I, just when he said that, I was shook because I, I was never, I never had to fear that. And I, right. I, I just really appreciate everything that I have now so much more. And so to follow up what I said about it being lonely, it's also one of the most rewarding things and not necessarily financially. I think everybody thinks that we're all Joe Rogan and swimming in <laughs> cash. And that's not true either. However, sometimes it's not about money. You know, it's about mm -hmm. that kind of a friendship and stories like that that keep life in perspective for us. I think that's been one of my favorite things is everybody's got a story. And mm -hmm. if we pause long enough to just listen to someone else's, we either find that it challenges us to do better in ours, or we find that we're very blessed. That's what I found. And the other thing, and I, you've probably found this, people are like, hey, how'd you get so-and-so? Like I ask, <laughs> you know, have, <laughs> yes. you, have you had that happen? All the time. I'm <laughs> like, they're like, how do you get all these people? And like, I'm like, I just DM'd them on Instagram. Like, I, <laughs> I didn't know, like, I did I mean, if you, if you would have said beforehand, like before I started it, like, how are you going to do this? I'll be like, I don't, I don't know. Like, just, just ask them, I guess. I, I really don't know. And I mean, yeah, that's so funny that you bring that up because I mean, I literally, I had the conversation the other day, like, how did you get so-and-so on the podcast? And I'm like, I just found their email and I emailed them. <laughs> and they're like, what? Is that easy? I'm like, yes, you can do it. it <laughs> like, if it I can do is. it, literally anybody can do it. Like literally anybody. It's just. It's but like you said, it is, you don't, I've never gotten paid. I never want fame from this. I only wanted to glorify God in it. But the people that I've met and the stories that I've heard pointing to Christ through sports mm -hmm. have been, it has fueled everything that I have done at this point. And it's hopefully will fuel me the rest of the time that I get to do it. It's funny because people are like, you're famous. No, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Like, well, how'd you get so-and-so? I'm like, I, I emailed him. 
I mean, yep. now look, you, I got a lot of no's you know, and that's okay. You gotta be okay with that too. You know, it's like being in sales, you know, yeah. but, but boy, when you get the one, yes, it's amazing. So let me ask you that. Who are some of your dream guests? And let's see if we can't manifest it for you. Man, I actually, Fabish asked me this, asked me this the other day, actually. That's funny that you said that. I think there's so many good ones. Tim Tebow, I think, is the right. the pinnacle. The that's pinnacle the, of, you know, the Christian that's, athlete. <laughs> he's, that's what they call it, the holy grail of big <laughs> guests. <laughs> like, I don't know if anyone's he's the uh, holy, the holy athlete. That. It's a holy athlete, the of holy podcast. athlete grail of podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think Tony Dungy, he, I've read all of his Dang books. It. He is one of the most That's amazing the... coaches. One of the most amazing mentors that has ever been in sports. Like it's like John Wooden, him yeah. and Dabo Sweeney. Like it, those are the people that are just, they, they fuel what I do in Christian athletics. And yeah, Tony is Unbelievable man, unbelievable human being. Yeah, agreed. So if you go back and listen to a couple of my episodes where, or ones I was on where people ask me that question, Tony Dungy's always on there. You know, Quiet Strength is the greatest book ever. Actually, I'm going to have to send you a clip where I had a guest on, and I don't remember who it was. Um, oh, you know, it was Jimmy Dykes from ESPN. <laughs> yeah. And he's got a great book too. I don't know if you've read it, but it's called The Film Doesn't Lie. And if you haven't, you got to go get it. It's, Okay. I was saying it's one of my top five favorite books. And then I think at some point I said, it's one of my top two favorite books. And this is all in the very first time I've ever met Jimmy. And, and then I said, you know, quiet strength is number one, you're number two. And I think towards the end, at some point towards the end of the interview, he said something like, well, you know, if you could have got G Tony Dungy, I probably wouldn't even be on right now or something. Like that. So <laughs> apparently I, I must've made it very clear that Tony Dutchie's my one and Jimmy's my two, but no, Jimmy's amazing. He responded to an email. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. like yeah. great guy. And now I've had him on twice and he was on Mark Price's show and just a great guy. But, and so I certainly didn't mean to offend, but uh, anyway, anyway, so if you get Jimmy Dykes on, don't mention Tony Dutchie. <laughs> tell him, tell him it's your favorite book and Tony Dutchie's yeah. number two. So <laughs> just quick podcasting tip. So, oh, man. All right, so what's next for you? What, so once you get Dungy and uh, Tebow, what, like, do you have other plans for the show? You just want to just keep just doing what God lays on your heart. I, I really, I think that's the plan. And I don't know. I love having like weird or crazy or unconventional athletes on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have like a ultra marathon runner. I've had mm -hmm. scuba diver and there's been so many, so many cool people that, like we said earlier, like they have such good stories and yeah. ways of spreading the gospel that I, you know, I'm never going to be able to do. I'm not going to be able to run hundred miles in one time at one time. And she had one of the best attitudes ever. Yeah. And while she's literally tearing her body apart, like right. she's, she's ran on torn hips, hips, ACLs and stuff like that. And she she has a book too, and it just describes how amazing it is to, first of all, run that far, which I don't I don't get at all. But two, share the gospel through running, mm -hmm. um, in in a place that you know otherwise may may never see the gospel, in in any way. Awesome. So, how can everybody find you? I know you said so. Name like you have a website. And then also you're probably on, I, I know I was on the website today. You're on all the major podcasting platforms. So yeah, can you just tell everybody again how they can find you? Yeah. You can type in <clears throat> competing for Christ podcast.com and we can, you know, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. We have, actually have a TikTok now. So do cool. I. It's so good. <laughs> it's an evil, it's an evil pleasure. Uh, yes. <laughs> Till they take yes. it away. That's yeah, funny. exactly. <laughs> But yeah, anywhere you listen to podcasts, you can you can definitely find me. But yeah, Aaron, thank you so much for for, for giving me the shout out and giving me the kind words. No, absolutely. All right, so if anybody's heard this, like besides my wife, who's like my number one listener, anybody else that where this may stumble somewhere, and and you know, God God always does amazing things. You know, we never know. So if they want to get in touch with you about a potential guest, or they feel like they have an amazing story as a Christian athlete. How do they do that? 
you can DM me on Instagram or you can, or any social media, or you can email me at competing for Christ podcast at gmail.com. There you go. And trust me, the show prep, like I said before, I really meant, it. I know where you left, but your show prep, your contact beforehand, your guest, your most recent guest said that as well. Like you guys had been in contact. And so you do a, a fantastic job of getting your guests ready for the show, for the questions, everything you're going to ask them. So just keep doing what you're doing. And when, when you get discouraged, again, anxiety, depression, you know, there's days, right? Sometimes we have dark days and it's just like, you know, I'm going to unplug all this. I'm going to sell this board. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. And you know, I mean, like we just have crazy days because life happens and don't. Okay. I, I want to keep encouraging you because yes, there's 8 million podcasts in the world, you know, but a good friend told me if you've, what did he say? I think it's, if you have more than a hundred, I might not, this quote might be completely wrong. Then you're in the top 2% of all podcasters. Mm. I don't even think it's a hundred. I think it's even less than that because a lot of people start off with the best intentions. And so when I do coaching for podcasting, I tell people right out of the gate, like, awesome. You know, it's, it's great. And, and I hope you do love it. There's so many great advantages, but a lot of people start and they just don't finish because they get mm. discouraged or they get frustrated or they get busy or, and that's okay. Like, that's what is beauty of the forum is you can just, everybody can have one, but yeah. you know, those that persevere through 60 episodes, you're, you're doing something right. And again, you're probably in that top 2% of the 9 million podcasts out. So keep mm. doing what you're doing. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate it, Aaron. And yeah, podcasting for anybody out there that wants to start a podcast, it's kind of like coming to know Jesus. Like you have these really great expectations, but you're just like, you know, like it's going to get hard. It's yeah. going to get really hard at that moment. But yeah, keep, keep the good faith or keep the, keep up the faith and keep up the good work because it's, it's, it's so beneficial for not only yourself, but anybody that listens to it is. And yours is one of the better ones and one of the more encouraging ones. There's a lot of bad out there. You know, mm. if you got a couple of true crimes in your listening pod, and that's okay, it's absolutely fine. And mix in a little competing for Christ podcast <laughs> every now and then just to, you know, keep it on the level. So man, I appreciate you keep doing what you're doing. We'll, we'll keep in contact and, and keep in touch and thanks for coming on and, and being a great guest. Absolutely. Aaron. Yeah. Thank you so much just for everything you've done for me. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to the latest episode of the Unscripted Podcast. Please remember to like and share. We'll be back soon with another amazing guest. But until then, remember to live each day unscripted. I don't want to be used by